Welcome to Table Tennis Philosophy. We've been going for about three months now and something I've noticed is that the most popular video I've put out by far is the second one I put out, which uh, was one of the worst quality videos as far as technically. Didn't look good, probably didn't sound good, but the content apparently is really uh, striking something with people because of uh, coming up on 2,000 views with that. And uh, the title of that one was uh, Short Pips Forehand or Backhand. So I don't know if there's that much demand for uh, people thinking about short pips, but I uh, thought, well, if that's, if that's what we're looking for and if that's what people are interested in hearing, and uh, at least according to my numbers, uh, the old, overwhelming number of people that are looking at my videos are coming from looking at that, at that particular video. I think the content is good, even though it's, uh, it's a little primitive on the uh, technical part of it. And I'm hoping that the technical part's getting better, but let's get, let's get down to it. This video is our short pips right for you. And there's some things that uh, make short pips very, very effective if they suit your game. And um, we're gonna run through a handful of them. Number one, you're gonna have to have really good reflexes. And I think if you're an experienced table tennis player, you probably have decent reflexes. But if you say you have de decent reflexes playing from mid distance or um, the occasional block, that's not quite good enough to play effectively with short pips. Short pips means you're going to have to stay close to the table. You're going to have to uh, make very quick shots, forehand and backhand, and that that gets down to yeah, are are you using it on your backhand or forehand? Either way, if you've put it on forehand, backhand, or even on both sides, you're gonna have to stay close to the table, you're gonna have to have good reflexes, and along with that um, goes good footwork. Here, here's the thing, if you make these fast, quick shots, it's going to mean that they're going to come back fast and quick, and you're gonna be close to the table. So, footwork is absolutely essential. And so in your training, if you've gone to short pips on either side, I would say that you're gonna to have to emphasize footwork close to the table more so than perhaps a player who loops from mid distance or chops. That's a different kind of footwork training. Uh, Falkenberg training, um, any kind of forehand, backhand combinations um, or hitting the ball over and over with your forehand left and right, which is exhausting by the way, and which brings us to another, another point. If you are planning to use short pips, it, it does help if you're physically in good shape. Now, you may not have to cover as much ground and your reflexes will have to be good, but if, if you're physically strong, physically in good shape, uh, that that will help. Of course, that would probably help with any any style of table tennis, but uh, playing with short pips close to the table is extremely demanding. And so, your um, let's let's recap. <laughs> you're going to need reflex, good reflexes. You're going to need excellent footwork. You it will help tremendously if you are have good cardiovascular abilities and uh, some some of just generally good physical condition I would say you don't have to be in super super condition to consider short pips but if you're in really really poor shape short pips are not you know if you're carrying an extra hundred pounds I would say short pips are definitely not for you so you got all those things to think about and uh, hit one of the points that I'm sure I hit on the other video is that if your strokes tend to be long, if you have a big looping stroke, that's probably not going to be conducive to using short pips. Now, 
throwing this caveat. If you are playing somewhat the Matthias Falk style with short pips on your forehand, you might be able to have a big, strong looping shot with a long stroke on your backhand, but you can't use that stroke on the side where you use your your um, your pips if that was on your forehand. The reverse of that would be if you are using short pips on your backhand and you loop on your forehand, you probably are gonna be using those short pips a lot for, for blocking. Um, uh, good videos to look at would be look at Mima Ito and see what she does with her short pips and see if that's something that appeals to you. As I said in the other video, short pips on your backhand seems to work better if you have all the, the qualities that you would need to play short pips and you're somewhat short if you're using them on the backhand. Works a little bit better if they're um, if you're a taller player, if you want to use them on your forehand, um, that could work. So, they're not for everybody, but apparently a lot of people are very interested in them. And um, I've, I've tried them and uh, used them for, uh, for my forehand, uh, which, which made sense. Backhand didn't work as well, which we covered in the last video. So, anyway, uh, that's a little bit more about short pips and if that's if you're considering them uh, those are the things that you should probably look at if you don't meet most of those criteria short pips probably aren't for you they are a lot of fun to play with and uh, give you those fast attacking shots that uh, are tough on your opponents but you're gonna need as much as possible to have some good footwork stamina good reflexes and that's got a the short pips have to suit your game. All right, welcome your comments. See you next time. Thanks.